Uh, hello everyone, this is Miss Anna from the Eldersburg Library at Exploration Point, and welcome to 3D Print Cookie Cutters. You can actually probably hear the 3D printer going in the background because I've got a tester running. And I am here to show you guys how to design your own cookie cutter, which I will then print and pass on to you on the library 3D printer. And I'm going to be screen cap for the beginning of this. I'm going to be um, talking over my screen. But after that, I will go and show you guys the printer itself. And originally I was going to use a website called Cookie Caster, which worked perfectly. But unfortunately that website recently went down. So we're going to have to do a way that's a little more roundabout, but we're going to learn some cool like Photoshop-y type stuff. It's going to be really fun. So let's get started. So we're going to be using a website called CookieCAD to make our cookie cutters. And it does require you to have an account. It doesn't cost anything unless you want them to print it. But I'm going to have you guys send your designs to me and then I'll make them myself. I'll imprint them. But we need a file to upload. And if you upload something that's like a photo or detailed, it gets like very muddled. It wants just silhouettes. So we have to take our picture and make it a silhouette. So the first step you're going to do is decide what you want to make a cookie cutter of. It can be anything. You can make it of a character, of an animal, any shape you like. Something for the holidays. Um, now, I do encourage you not to do anything with super sharp corners. And it does have to be something that's one solid shape. You can't really do something that has a hole in the middle of it. And... I am going to try show you guys a couple ways to go about this. The first is I'm going to start with the more complicated way. For another library program, I need to make some cookie cutters that look like owls. So I went on Google, and I if I Google owl, I get the animal. And these are all a little too difficult for what we're looking for here. But if I type owl clip art or owl... I can't type. There we go. If I type owl silhouette, I get just these black outlines of owls. Those will work perfectly. But I want something that's a little more cartoony. So I'm going to search owl clip art. And I think... Hmm. I'm going to browse around a little bit and look at these photos and these images. And pick one that I'd like to be my cookie cutter. And things like this, looking up clip art or silhouettes is perfect because it gives you those smooth lines. I think these are all very cute. Another trick you might even want to try is looking up the thing you want and then cookie cutter. And then you'll even already have things that work just fine as cookies so that you'll know that they work alright. So I'm going to go ahead and save an image and then show you what to do next. So I decided that I'm going to use one of these owl cookie cutters as the basis. So I already saved that to my computer. I'm going to go to this website. It's called Photopea. This is what I personally use as my, um, I guess I should just say knockoff Photoshop. It's Photoshop but free. It's a photo editor website. And the URL is up here. So we're going to go off visit this site. Um, excuse that Facebook notification in the corner. But I'm going to go File, Open, and my picture, well, I'm going to have to go find my picture. One moment. So I'm in my library file here, and here's my picture. And I liked this picture because it just gave me a good outline. But you'll notice that I do have all this background stuff. And if I put that into the Cookie Cat website, it's not going to know what to do with it. So I just need this owl outline. So what I'm going to do is pick a solid color. I'm going to pick a dark blue, I think. That'll be easy to see. Then take this brush tool, this paintbrush right here. And I'm going to carefully follow that outline using my mouse and keyboard. You just want to hold down your mouse and follow that outline. I'm going to make it a little smaller. You can do that by going up to this thing in the corner and bringing down the size. And you just want to follow that outline like this. It's okay if it's not perfectly straight. I like to kind of be a little meticulous. You can also, if you hold down your shift key, you'll get a straight line. 
I don't want that to be perfectly straight, but I can also click a point here, hold down my shift key, and then click a point right here, and it gives me that diagonal line. And I'm just going to keep outlining, go back over a little bit, and I'll get back to you guys once I've got that outlined. And you'll notice I kind of veered out here while I was outlining. That's okay. If you make a mistake, you could just go up here where it says history and click back to your previous step. And you can undo and even redo all your steps that way. Cool. And now that I've got that outlined, I'm going to go up here again, make my brush bigger, and then fill in that outline until it's completely solid. Don't go outside the lines, but just fill out what you drew. Now that we do have this all filled in, that'll serve as the ba basis for the cookie cutter program. We're going to need to get rid of this background. So we're going to grab this tool called the Magnetic Lasso. It's up here on the bar where my uh, mouse is circling. You're going to right click on that and click Magnetic Lasso. Then start at a point on your edge there and carefully bring that around. You'll probably need to click it a few times, but you're going to follow that outline and actually click pretty regularly. It should adhere to the outline of your shape, but it'll end up looking something like this. I'm going to click there for safety. Now when you get little points like this, you want to click a few times. There we go. So that's selected. Then I'm going to go up to where it says select on this top bar and click inverse. That makes the background select it, and then I'm just going to click the delete button. So now I'll have a transparent image, and that will work perfectly for my cookie cutter. So I'm going to go up here, and what you can even do is go into your little search bar and go snip, and I'll give you something called snip and sketch. It might be called the snipping tool. Click new. And then make a little square around your image. Because PhotoP is a little goofy when it comes to saving your images. But we can save it just like that. Then use whatever save button you use on your computer. And save that to your files. There is also, if you don't want to go through using the Photoshop, there is a much easier way to go about it. And that's just go onto Google Images and search for whatever you're looking for and then type clip art or silhouette, um, especially silhouette. So I have a friend who requested a snowflake cookie cutter. So I went and looked for snowflake clip art. And now I'm going to, and you can even see that it tells you to look at silhouettes up here. But I'm going to scroll through here for, look for a shape that I like. You're going to want to look for something with thicker, thicker lines. Something like, um, like this would not work at all. But I saw down here, this one would work perfectly. I wouldn't be able to get that little hole in the middle, but if I upload this to the website, it'll work just fine. So I'm going to save that to my files, and that's what you would do on your computer. You're just going to save that to whatever file folder you use. After you have a picture saved to your files, you're going to go to your email, and you're going to upload your picture into your email as an attachment, and then address it to A. John's at C-A-R-R dot org. This is my email. And then write your name. So I'm going to put Anna Cookie Cutter. And then write down whatever your picture is. So I have a record of who gets what. So I would write Snowflake or Al if I was doing that. Please excuse the fact that I have a whole English degree and yet I can't type. Um, and then if you want to write a message, like just write, this is my cookie cutter. Uh, my name is, insert your name here, and it is a owl shape. Um, that's up to you. But you're just going to send that to me. So I would click send, and that way I would get your file, and that way I can start printing it out. And I will send you better instructions about that in your email when you get it. So this is the website that I'm going to be using. You guys don't have to worry about this. I'm going to take care of this part. But this is where I will be creating your cookie cutters. So I'm going to get the snowflake picture, and you just upload it, it traces your image and takes a bit. You can see it's generating the model, that red line means that the little hole in the middle is not going to show up. 
But now you can see the model of what our cookie cutter is going to look like. Isn't that cool? And from there, I would download the file. Um, you can see that I can change how how large it is. I can change the thickness of the blade. That's the part that goes into your cookie dough. There's all sorts of cool stuff I can do with this. But from here, I would go and I'm going to go do both our owl and our snowflake and hook them up to the 3D printer. And I'll show you guys um, how I set it up to start printing them out. We've got our file made. I thought you all might enjoy seeing how I actually put the stuff on the 3D printer and get it to start printing. There is a pen in my hand. Let's get rid of that. Um, I've already got the files all uploaded here. Let me bring up the computer so you can see. This is what the program looks like. And you can see I'm going to print both of the cookie cutters we worked on. I had to adjust them a bit to get them both to fit. But now I'll show you how I get the 3D printer loaded and set to go. I don't know if you'll be able to see the screen very well. The first thing I would do is upload my files. And I've already done that. And I've turned on the 3D printer. So next I need to go over here. And I need to click connect. And now the computer will start connecting with the printer. And it might take a moment. Sometimes you need to turn it off and on again. All right, it should be going. And now I'm going to want to preheat the hot end. That's this part. That's the nozzle that the filament's going to come out of. And if you ever see the 3D printer running, um, there should be a barrier in front of it, but don't ever touch this hot part, this nozzle here, because it gets really, really hot. It has to melt the filament. And I'm going to get back to you guys in a second because that's not heating up. Now I've got that hot end to about 146 degrees. I'm going to put the filament in the 3D printer. And this is, um, it's called polylite. It's very, like, plasticky. This is what it looks like before you put it in. And I just put the wheel on this little hook up here. And then there's a little latch that you undo. And I'm just going to stick that through a little hole. And you should see it start kind of flowing out of the nozzle there. It's a little hard to see how this is very flattering to watch. What a nice angle. <laughs> I'm going to latch that in place. And I'm going to actually bring my computer up. You can see how that kind of starts to flow out a little bit. And that's what the filament looks like when it's coming out. If I had done a different color, fortunately I had used blue the last time I 3D printed something. If I had used a different color before, I would have to extrude it a few times to get all of that different color out of the nozzle. And that means I would press a button to make this filament pour out while it was hot. So now, I'm going to take some pliers out of my toolbox here. And I'm going to just take out that strand. And you see that's already hard because it dries super fast. And I'm just going to go ahead. I've got my prints ready. I'm just going to click start print. And now we wait. And I'll start. Yep. I'm going to grab that extra filament off there. And let me bring it up here. Our cookie cutters will look something like this when they're done. Um, this is a cloud shaped one. But you guys will have whatever shape you design. And I'm going to bring my laptop up. So you can hear it starting to go. There won't be anything too exciting to see yet. But eventually that nozzle will come down and it'll start printing. And I'll show you guys a little bit of footage of that once it's ready to go. Okay, now we can see the 3D printer's getting started. It's going to go back and forth a little bit. And right now it's identifying where the build plate is so that it knows it stays on there. I'm going to give it one more minute here. I can't see it super well. Let me see if I can tilt that down. But you can see it's at least starting on the owl cookie cutter. You can see that outline forming. And it's filling in. This is going to be like the handle part of the cookie cutter. 
but I'm going to come back here once it's gone a little bit further. Let that do its thing, and I'll come back and show you guys. The program says this should be take about, oh, excuse me, it'll take about two and a half hours to make this print. So I'm going to come back in about an hour or so and see how far it's come. Oh, it's going to be started on the snowflake. This is going to look super cool. I did plan, I did plan on having a little footage of these about midway done. But I had a meeting to go to, and now, and they finished a lot faster than I thought they would. So here is the final product on the 3D printer of our two cookie cutters. So I'm going to go into this toolbox, I'm going to grab this knife, and very carefully use it to pry those off the plate. Sometimes they're a little trickier when they're more delicate, like the snowflake. So I'll put the knife away, because it's sharp. And I can just kind of pluck this off. This is a trace. This is put on the 3D printer to show, um, to pretty much tell the computer where the print needs to be. And from there, I'm just going to throw that out. These are what our two cookie cutters look like. I'm actually going to flip that around. Okay, so we are back to looking at my face, but I thought you guys might like to see the final product of our cookie cutters. So here's the owl-shaped one, and here's what it looks like from the back. The blade is kind of thin, um, a little thinner than the website I usually use, but um, anyway. So there is our owl-shaped one, and I actually get it in two different sizes out of curiosity. This one's like slightly bigger, but ours will probably be about, about yay big, about three inches. And then here's the snowflake. I think this one turned out real cool too. Um, do the, the makeup YouTuber trick here. So we've got two completely different 3D print cookie cutters, and I think that's really neat. And again, you can do pretty much whatever shape you want, as long as it has distinct lines. And again, like the snowflake, uh, if you do do something a little more intricate like this, it will come out a little more difficult to make cookies. So if you're like more of an expert, uh, Excuse me. If you're more of an expert, try something like this. But if you're more of just someone who bakes for fun every now and then, I would go with something a little bigger. And another really important thing to know, especially if you do something like this that's going to have like these little spaces, whenever you use your cookie cutter, you want to wrap it in plastic wrap before you put it in the dough. Because you can't really see, but there are teeny little gaps in the blade of the cookie cutter between like the two layers of filament and dough will clog up those gaps and if you have something that has these little spaces here those will get clogged up as well so please be sure to wrap up your cookie cutter in saran wrap before you get going and also i would recommend washing these in the sink rather than the dishwasher simply because i personally do not know if they are dishwasher safe so once your cookie cutter is printed you will get an email um that tells you to come to the Eldersburg Library and your cookie cutter will be in a lunch bag with your name on it and you just gotta pick up the one with your name on it and your cookie cutter will be there all set to go and once you get your cookie cutter I would love it if you sent me a quick email saying like hey we got it all is good um don't worry about it too much if you're busy though and excuse me and I hope you just have a lot of fun with this activity. Um, take a picture of your cookie cutter when you um, pick it up and put it on our Facebook alongside the video. Um, I would love to see if you guys make cookies with them. Take a picture and put it in the Facebook post comments or on the... Oh, wait. I was about to say YouTube comments, but I don't think we have those. But I hope you all have fun and have a great time with your cookie cutters. Have a good day.